Hello, welcome back to our course in College Algebra. In this video, I would like to discuss drawing the graph of a linear function. As we've talked about in previous videos, this course is all about the concept of function. And earlier on, we discussed how useful the graph of a function was. The graph of a function is a set of all input-output pairs, where you take any input in the domain and associate it with the output in the range by looking at the points on the graph. So extraordinarily useful tool, these graphs. So what we're going to do throughout the course is talk about how to create accurate graphs for various classes of functions. And the simplest class of function to deal with is the class of linear functions. So let's just start with an example. Graph f of x equals 2x minus 1. Now, many of you are probably familiar with graphing lines already. The key thing to look at is the slope. Okay, now most of the time we will be given a linear function in what is called slope intercept form. Now, mathematicians are not very creative with names. When you've got the slope intercept form, for a linear function, the coefficient of x is your slope, and there is your y-intercept. Okay, we call it the slope-intercept form because you can see the slope and you can see the y-intercept. And that makes it very easy to draw quick yet accurate graphs for linear functions. So we begin by plotting single point on our graph. The y-intercept is negative 1. All right? And if you remember our video on reading graphs, the graph is a set of all input-output pairs. The fact that I just plotted 0, negative 1 on the graph means if I use 0 as my input, I should get negative 1 as my output. Well, if I use 0 as the input here, that means I replace the x on the other side with a 0. 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. So 0 comes in, negative 1 comes out, 0, negative 1 is on the graph. The slope tells me how to get additional points on the graph without doing any real computations. Okay, so the slope is 2 for this function. For every one unit increase in x, y increases by two units. Okay, so because the slope is positive, I know y is going to increase when x increases. So here's where we start. One unit increase in x, we're supposed to go up two and increase y by two units. That is another point on my graph. And since I recognize that this is a linear function, that's really all I've got to do. I could do others if I wanted to, over one, up two again. But this is the graph of our function. And once again, very useful. I didn't plot this point before, okay? I can look at my graph and see the point negative 1, comma, negative 3 is on the graph. That means negative 1 comes in, negative 3 comes out. You can check that with your function notation. Plug negative 1 in for x on the left, and then substitute negative 1 in for x on the right, and you'll see f of negative 1 is negative 3. So very easy to draw the graph of a linear function quickly and accurately by looking at the slope. 
Let's do a couple more examples just to make sure we get the hang of everything. Okay. Okay, let's try this one. Graph f of x equals 5 minus x. Okay, so here, it's a little bit tricky. It's not written in the exact same way. Okay, when we say slope intercept, there's your slope. Your slope is the coefficient of x. Okay, so in this example, the slope is negative 1. That's the coefficient of x. So for every one unit increase in x, y would decrease by one unit. Okay, if the slope is positive, increasing the x value leads to an increase in the y value. If the slope is negative, increasing the x value leads to a decrease in the y value. Notice we are always talking about what happens to y when we increase x by one unit. If the slope is positive, an increase in x leads to an increase in y, and the graph is rising as we go right to left. I'm sorry, left to right. If the slope is negative, an increase in x leads to a decrease in y, and the graph is falling as we go left to right. So once again, we're looking at this here. My y-intercept is 5. I start by plotting that point on the y-axis. Remember, it's the y-intercept, so it tells you where the graph crosses the y-axis. You can probably get this from the context, but the intercepts of a graph are places where the graph crosses the axes, the coordinate axes. The y-intercepts are where the graph crosses the y-axis, the x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. That is the y-intercept. In this case, b is 5. Okay, so over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1. We keep going over 1 and down 1. And we see... This is the graph of y equals f of x equals 5 minus x, okay? Notice here, the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma, 0 is on the graph. The x-intercepts of the graph are also sometimes called the zeros of the function, okay? So... The zeros of the function are x values that you can put into the function to get zero out. So this is saying 5 goes in, 0 comes out. And you can check that with your function notation. That, that does actually work. Okay, so here we have a slope of negative 1, y-intercept of positive 5. We start here and use the slope to plot other points, once again, without doing any computations. As we'll see throughout the course, if we focus on the key properties of the function, we can draw very accurate graphs without doing a lot of number crunching. Okay, when you graph on a computer, well, the computer just plots a bunch of points and, and draws those on the screen. But we don't think the same way computers think. It's much better for a person to think in terms of these conceptual ideas rather than plugging and chugging and doing a lot of computations. Leave the computations to the computer. A couple more examples. Okay, negative 3 over 2x. So the slope is negative 3 over 2. For every one unit increase in x, y decreases by 3 over 2.
y-intercept here is zero. Okay, if we're thinking about this kind of structure, coefficient of x is the slope. Well, the coefficient of x is negative 3 over 2. The y-intercept is the constant. Well, there is no constant. The constant is zero. So that's our y-intercept. Now, this might not be the way you're used to thinking about it. It, it works. If I go over one unit on the x-axis, I'm supposed to go down because the slope is negative. My y value is supposed to decrease by three halves of a unit. Now, this is not a whole number. So what we usually do is, okay, instead of just going over one unit, go over two, which means you will go down three. So over two, down three. That gets you to your second point. And you've got your graph. Okay, so remember, positive slope, your graph is rising as you go left to right. Negative slope, your graph is dropping as you go left to right. And the slope tells you precisely how to do that. One more scenario I want to look at. Let's do something like this, f of x equals 5. Okay, thinking of this kind of structure, well, the coefficient of x, well, there, there is no x. There are zero x's. The coefficient of x is zero. Slope is zero. For every one unit increase in x, y increases, I'll put a little question mark under that, by zero. Okay, well, if it increases by zero, that means nothing happens to the y value. You go over to the right, and you stay at the exact same height. The graph of this function would be a flat horizontal line. We call this a constant function because the y value is constantly the same. There is no change in the y value. Okay, so be careful of that. This is slope zero, gives us a flat horizontal line. Okay, so we've looked at a couple different varieties. Remember, positive slope, graph rises as we go left to right. Negative slope, graph drops as we go left to right. Zero slope, you're horizontal. Okay.